This is Twit. We're going to talk a little bit about solar. This is uh, so important right now, right? Like, there's, there's so much innovation happening uh, in the solar industry. Adoption still relatively low. I mean, we we actually just got solar on our house. It took us a long time to get here, but we're finally here. And, uh, you know, I think the the overall goal is to get everybody on board with solar. Uh, that's just better for the environment, better for a number of things. Our next guest is actually aiming to lower the barriers for adoption, which can be quite large based on the infrastructure that we have right now. Just actually won the American Made Solar Go Prize, beating out more than 120 competing solar projects and winning a $500,000 payout. Uh, Brian Ashley is CEO of the R&D Lab. Also, full disclosure, Brian is a close friend of mine, uh, but... I love what your team is doing, so it's awesome to welcome you to my neck of the woods, Brian. Welcome. Thank you. Glad to be here. Thanks for the opportunity. <laughs> you bet. It's good to see you on the screen instead of in, in real life as well. Uh, so let's start with um, one, uh, I'd say, the you know one of the biggest challenges for solar right now, and I kind of alluded to it, um, is... This, this idea that it needs to be expanded, but there needs to be incentive there for a lot of people to even consider it. We know, you know, obviously solar is a great idea. We know that it's good for the environment. It reduces cost of energy, all of these benefits. So why is adoption of solar uh, slower than it could possibly be and should be? Yeah, that's right. Um, you know, right now, 5 million homes get a new roof every year. You know, the roof wears out and that's the replacement rate, 5 million per year in this country. And solar, the uptake rate for solar is at about 400,000 homes per year. And I think the big reason is that there's no need to get solar. You know, you, you said you just got it, but you didn't need to. You could have just kept using the utility. Mm -hmm. And so what we're trying to do is couple a need that people do have, the roof, to solar so that we can increase that uptake substantially. So then, um, in you know, and, and part of obviously the the contest, uh, the the Solar Go Prize, which we'll talk about in a, in a little bit here. But part of this is this entire package. You've designed a solar roofing uh, product that really addresses some of the shortcomings of of what's currently on the market. You know, you look around at I I don't know what the number is, but I'm assuming probably like 80, 90 percent of roofs out there are all the asphalt roofing and and all that. Uh, you know, of course, we've also got Tesla, who I should I should also mention you worked for Tesla on their solar roof product. So you're so you've spent a lot of time being really focused on the technological benefits and 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 uh, innovation that's happening in solar right now. You've got a lot of these other um options on the market compared to what's out there right now, what actually sets uh, what you guys are creating apart from the rest of the market? Yeah, we took a totally different tact with our solar roofing product. And you can see it's using commodity solar panels and it's still designed to look really good. But instead of using, you know, instead of redesigning solar to look like a roofing shingle, we design roofing shingles to better integrate with the solar modules. And so it's color, gloss, and line matched. And it has features that enable the installers to put it in more quickly and easily. And so, you know, from the curb view, it looks really good and homogenous and intentional. Um, but we're utilizing supply chains and labor markets that are already existing so that we can scale quickly. And like you said, I, I worked at Solar and I like that product. But what we're doing is really trying to fill out the market and make it big. And so that's what this product is all about. Yeah, and I think what's really interesting um, is the aesthetic that you're kind of alluding to. And actually, when we're if you're watching the video, um, you can see kind of behind Brian is an example of of the kind of the cohesion between the two things. It's not just the panel. It's not just the tiling. It's all of it together. And it has a very unique aesthetic compared to what I'm used to seeing when I look out my window right now and see someone's solar on their house. And, you know, it's it's the, uh, well, it's basically what we have, right? It's, it's, <laughs> it's the asphalt roofing with a solar component on top. And they aren't really matched. They don't really blend together because it really is taking modern technology and coupling it with technology that's, you know, <laughs> so, you know far older. Um, so talk a little bit about the aesthetic that you guys have created not just the look, of course, but the function of that design. How, how do they kind of work uh, hand in hand? Yeah, I mean, 
the the key aspects of getting it to look good aesthetically were to do color, gloss, and line matching. And if you kind of break out what are the fundamentals of aesthetics, there's more than just color, gloss, and line matching. There's also planarity. And we didn't we didn't make our product planar, but what we did was we took the like the elements that were the lowest cost and the highest benefit and went after those first. And we tried to get more from them. So you asked about what function do we get out of the aesthetics? And I think if you look at the shingles, you can see there are a length and width multiple of the commodity solar panels that we're integrating with. And that enables us to have line matching, which is important. You know, when you're walking by, it looks intentional. It looks like an architectural feature rather than just, you know, black solar modules on a brown roof or even a black roof. Um, but the other functionality we get out of it is hardware positioning. Once you put the modules on or once you put the roofing shingles on, the solar installer doesn't have to do any kind of layout work. They're not walking up on your roof with a piece of chalk and trying to figure out where the modules go or if there's going to be an interference with a vent pipe. You can see it all from the layout of the shingles. It's like that game of Tetris has already been played and you know where all the pieces are going to land. I love it. It's it's such a, a clean look too, right? It feels like like the look of it and the, the the aesthetic of it outside of kind of the functional aspects of it look kind of like they match the future of where solar should be heading, right? Where we're just so used to what our roofs do look like, and this feels like a like a <laughs> I, I hate to say futuristic view, but it really does look like a modern, a more modern, um, aesthetic with the, with the panels and matching the tiles, uh, on the house from, Oh yeah. What were you going to say? Well, I was going to say that brings up a couple good points. One is that a lot of other companies that have designed BIPV products have designed the solar and tried to redesign it to make it look like the roof. And you've got to ask yourself that question. What, what does a roof look like and why? And the answer yeah. is the physics of the materials that were available to make them. It's not like everyone sought, you know, it's not like asphalt shingle was the development of some beautiful architectural dream. It's just <laughs> the materials worked to do that in that way. And so the, the function followed the, the form. Yeah. Yeah. And ind indeed. Um, and, and not to mention, uh, that brings other benefits as well. Longevity is, is super key. There's a durability when you're using tiles of this sort. And I know you guys did a bunch of, uh, like fire testing as you have to do in order to roll this out on a wide scale. Talk a little bit about that kind of the longevity and durability of something like this. Yeah. Um, you know, one key aspect of durability is that by getting a, you know, our roof lasts 50 plus years where an asphalt shingle roof might last 20. And that enables you to realize those cash flows from offset energy use for a much longer period of time. So not only does it look better, but it also pays for a longer period of time, which enables this product to have a better net present value than any other solar roof on the, on the market. Um, and the way that we did that was we we, te we did fire testing, which you're showing in the videos here. And it, it's pretty interesting to see this. I mean, it's basically like having a campfire on your roof. It's a really intense fire. And then we also do wind uplift testing, hail testing. Um, and the result of it is that we've got a product that will survive hurricanes and class four hail and fire in a way that no asphalt roof can. So it's a better roofing product not only is it integrating solar really well, but it's also just a better roof. Yeah. And, uh, and again, getting back to kind of where we, where we started with this conversation, the incentive. And I think that's just an important point to, to drive home is that, you know, at the end of the day and, and you, you know, and, and next we will talk about the prize cause that's an important part of this story too. But, um, you guys, you, you put together a video that kind of sets up the, uh, the problem and, and of course the solution that is your solar tile solution. Um, but setting up the, the challenge, which is that, you know, at, <laughs> we need to replace our roof. We don't necessarily need to put solar on, but if you, if, if you have created what you have a product that kind of integrates both of those things together, creates that longevity, makes it so that if you're replacing the roof, I mean, you might as well put solar up there anyways, because it's really the, the best time to do it. It's like, you've, you've uh, brought that, that rationale, that reason to the forefront. 
and that would in, inevitably expand uh, the marketplace, which is, I imagine, exactly what you hope ha will happen with this product. That's right. Our goal is to, you know, grow solar faster. We want to scale solar more quickly, and we feel like the way to do that is to make it so that whenever anybody needs a new roof, they get offered solar at that same time because that is the best time. And it can be the obvious choice because, you know, why would you choose, a, you know, a $10,000 roofing bill when you could choose a roof that will pay for itself, which is what we're doing, which is what we've got. Yeah. Love it. So, um, as I keep alluding to your company, um, you just beat out hundreds, well, about 120, 140, somewhere around there, other solar projects, uh, in the American made solar go prize. This is actually run by the U S department of energy. Uh, so it's, it's a big deal. And, you know, of course you're my friend. So we were just super thrilled when, uh, when you guys, uh, won this, how do you, how do you plan to, to take that, that award, that $500,000 award, and apply that to the business, to, to building this out further. What does that enable you to do that you didn't have the ability to do before? It is going to enable us to grow more quickly. And I really, that's what we need to do is get this out to solar roofers, you know, people that can install solar and roofing as quickly, as quickly as possible and get it to scale. Because, you know, instead of doing, you know, the the 400,000 homes that were done last year, we want to grow that into the millions. And so that means accelerating quickly and getting this into people's hands quickly. The product was designed to be simple. And so uptake will only be limited by our ability to get it into the market. And this really has, you know, removed the hurdle for, for launch for us by, by winning this prize. Awesome. And so people who are watching and listening are interested. Um, I know <laughs> I see in our Slack, Burke is super interested. He's like, ask about the tile roof product if it's going to be available. Um, if people are interested in, in what you're talking about, like what can they, what can they do to further investigate this? I mean, obviously uh, the RD uh, lab.com is your site, but are people going to be, you know, checking with their roofer who would be, who would in turn be, um, be kind of the conduit, the, the person that's going to connect them to a product like this and about what time frame would, would they be able to do that? If you know. Yeah, we're, we, we should be, we've completed all those certification testing. And so we expect it will be available for sale in October when all the paperwork for certification is complete. Nice. Uh, because, you know, any product like this has to go through rigorous certification with uh, third parties like UL. Um, and so October is the sale date in terms of getting your hands on it. I think that can happen both ways. You know, the roofers can request the product directly from us and homeowners can request the product from their roofers. And we're happy to, um, you know, if, if, if you hit up your roofer and there, and then the roofer hits up us, we will enable them to get our product and it's quick and easy to install. So it's not like they need to go through a big giant rigorous training program or a certification program like you might have to do with Tesla. So we expect to be able to get it into people's hands quickly and easily is really designed for that. Nice. Love what you guys are doing. Uh, and I'm so thrilled to have the opportunity to uh, bring you on uh, this show. Brian Ashley, of course, CEO of the R&D Lab. Um, place to send people if they, if they want to find out more. Is it just the rdlab.com or is there somewhere else you'd like them to go? Yeah, the rdlab.com is the place to go right now. And there's, there's a contact page. Um, if you're local, Amy's Roofing and Solar can install this product and sell it to you right now. They, they're our, uh, kind of our pilot company that we use to test out products and get them out into the world quickly and easily. 